Saturday was such a beautiful day. Dry, sunny and reasonably warm for this time of year in Northern Ireland. That meant I was able to do something I've been looking forward to all winter. Yes, getting the power washer out of the garage. When I look back over the years, my power washer has to be one of the best gifts I ever received from a husband. I sometimes think about why I just love power washing so much. It can be a really wet and dirty job, but yesterday I was reminded once again of why I love it. You start off with a backyard of dirty paving slabs and then slowly and methodically you work your way along washing off a year's accumulated grime and dirt. As you walk along and move along with the power washer, you soon begin to see the difference. There the clean slabs and the dirty water is going down the drain. It's a real transformation taking place before your very eyes from dirty to clean. Every single time I'm power washing, I cannot help but think of the work that Jesus came to do in our lives. He really is the master power washer, but with a difference. The cleaning that Jesus does in our lives isn't just on the surface. It isn't just a superficial clean like wiping down the outside of the oven door, but leaving the inside a mess. Jesus cleanses us from the inside out. How does he do this power washing? Paul tells us in Titus chapter 3 verse 5 that Jesus saved us through the washing of rebirth. That really is some power cleaning, the washing of rebirth. His work of cleaning is so powerful it's called becoming a new creation or being born again. If you're familiar with the Bible, you will know that throughout the Old Testament, there was a requirement for the people to present perfect animals to the priests to be sacrifices for their sins. The priests would take the animal, kill it, and then sprinkle some of its blood on the altar. Of course, the people knew that these innocent animals couldn't actually take away their sins, but it was symbolic of the blood required for their cleansing. The Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness. There is no forgiveness. But these sacrifices of the Old Testament were also a powerful picture or a foreshadowing of what God had already planned would happen or would take place one day in the future. God was going to send his son into this world to be the perfect lamb of God, the perfect atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus came, God's son. He was both the priest and the sacrifice, and he willingly offered himself to God in our place. He stood in our place. He became the sacrificial lamb, our substitute, and his blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sin. After Jesus, no more sacrifices for sins ever needed to be offered because he had stood in our place. The Bible tells us his sacrifice was once for all. The righteous, that's Jesus, for the unrighteous, that is us, to bring us to God. His precious blood bought our forgiveness. It was offered for our cleansing. Today I wonder, have you received this power washing? Have you ever received the cleansing of your sin freely offered to you by Jesus Christ? He died on the cross for you. 
to bring you forgiveness for every sin, to cleanse away the stain and the guilt of every sin you have ever committed and to bring you to God, to know God as your Father. This is what it is to trust in Jesus, to trust in what he did for you on the cross. He is the only Saviour. He is the only one who can forgive you and cleanse you because he's the only one who stood in your place. He's the only one who paid the price, his life, for your life, for your cleansing. Why today don't you come to the master power washer and ask him to cleanse you? and to bring you to God.